best stories in sports. This is an E60 feature presentation. September 2nd, 2011. The Barons of Central High School in Mannheim, Pennsylvania are getting ready to open their season. If we come out with a victory, you will make Mannheim so proud. And uh, you'll return some of that sanity to our town again. You'll bring some joy back. This is an opportunity that few get to do something for others, something for our community. No player has been more eager for this opportunity than senior quarterback Caleb Walton. Eight months earlier, the 17-year-old's life and those of his teammates was shattered in an instant. There's an accident right in front of my house. We had multiple entrapments. It felt shameful because looking in the parents' eyes and saying, yes, I was a part of this, and yes, I didn't stop them, it gives a person so much guilt. One hundred miles west of Philadelphia, Mannheim is a largely rural farming community. Its high school football team has made 20 consecutive postseason appearances. It's won 16 district championships. It's like a religion. The town really embraces it, and they love their football. This man, I'm central football tradition. It springs everyone in. Mannheim advanced to the state playoffs in 2010, losing in the second round. In the weeks following the loss, hopes for the 2011 season were running high. We had a couple players that we thought could put us over the top, you know. We, we looked at some of those players as giving us uh, the potential to be section champion or even a district champion. No player meant more to the Barons' hopes than 15-year-old running back Devon Lee. As a freshman, he'd starred for both the varsity basketball and football teams. I thought he could be a, you know, a Division I player. He just had it all, not only in physical ability, but also his, his mental ability. He was a leader as a ninth grader. I was at uh, middle school lifting one time, and uh, I was working hard, and Coach Williams came up and asked me if I would be interested in coming up and playing high school. And I, I gave him a quick yes. Sunday, January 16, 2011, dawned cold and clear in Mannheim. The football team gathered for a postseason brunch. After the meal, at about 10 a.m., Caleb Walton and Devon Lee met up with four teammates. The group, which included senior Mark Neal, split into two cars to play hide and seek with their vehicles. One group of people go hide. They pull over. They give you a hint of where they are. You try and find them. When you find them, we would stop, get out, and throw a snowball. I'm driving in my car, and Devon's a passenger. And Devon texted uh, one of them in the car, not the driver, but one of them in the car, and was like, hey, we'd give them a hint, they would come. Cell phone records indicate that the drivers of the two vehicles exchanged text messages. Caleb received a text from the cell phone of the driver of the other car that said, follow us. He responded with a text that said, why? A few minutes later, Caleb and Devon received a response. All it said, ramp. I followed him for a while, and we uh, went out to the site. And I've never really been there. So I see him go over this, this bump in the road, and I, I see they get a little bit of air. And I'm like, whoa, like, what the heck was that? After jumping the hill at low speed, both cars pulled off the road. The group of friends discussed jumping the hill again this time at a higher rate of speed. I was just like, this doesn't sound good, like a good idea. Let's not do it. Let's go do something else. Devon next to me was like, yo, let me go in there. I want to go. And I was like, I was like, are you sure? And he was like, yeah, I'll just go. And so he gets in the car and Mark switches with him. Mark's now in my car and Devon's in their car. 
What did you say to yourself after that first jump that made you get out of the car? I guess you could say someone told me not to get back in. Caleb and Mark waited by the side of the road. Their teammates in the other vehicle raced down the hill. When their car hit the bump in the road at the bottom of the hill, it went airborne. What's your emergency? Oh, there's an accident right in front of my house. Is anyone injured? Um, yeah, I saw someone ejected from the car. How many vehicles are involved? Two. We have multiple entrapments. They're teenagers. I felt numb right when I saw it. It was almost unbelievable. Like, did that really just happen? Like, did I just really see a car accident with my best friends in there? According to police reports, the football player's car was speeding between 81 and 86 miles per hour, more than twice the 40 mile per hour speed limit. As the car landed, a tire flew off and the vehicle slid sideways down the road into the oncoming lane of traffic. There, they had struck a Mercedes heading the opposite direction. After the car carrying his teammates came to a rest in an adjacent field, Caleb approached the vehicle and saw his friend Cody Hollinger. It looked like they were unconscious, but Cody was kinda, he was moving a little bit, and Cody looks at me and he was like, what happened? I was like, you, you were in a car accident, everything's gonna be fine. Uh, I, just don't worry, I love you, man. And that's when someone pulled me away. The two people in the Mercedes that collided with the teen's car were uninjured. Cody Hollinger and John Griffith, both 16, 15-year-old Nick Bryson and Devon Lee all died. All four were wearing their seatbelts. No drugs or alcohol were detected in their systems. No criminal charges were filed. What was the rest of that day like? I came into shock. I didn't know what was going on. All I was thinking about was what happened earlier in that day. Five days after the accident, alongside some teammates, Caleb Walton served as a pallbearer at a memorial service for his friends who died. What were you feeling at the memorial service? Guilt. Sadness. I felt shameful. Because looking in the parents' eyes and saying, yes, I was a part of this. And yes, I didn't stop them. It gives a person so much guilt. At one point in time, Caleb said, why couldn't it have just been me and not them? Why didn't you, why wasn't it just me? I knew in that situation I could have done something different. What could you have done different? Just, you know, force them to stop. I was always the leader between most of them. And, you know, I just wish I would have been able to persuade them not to do it. Services continued throughout the week. For eight days after the crash, all Mannheim Central sports were postponed. In the school's first athletic event back, the Barons basketball team would take the court without its best player, freshman Devon Lee. We introduced Devon in the starting lineup. Whenever Devon was doing well in a game, uh, me and a couple others would get the whole student section and chant, he's a freshman. We started that chant one more time. We played with four. For the first three seconds of the game, called a timeout. 
that was tough. That was tough for the guys. It was really tough for the guys. After calling timeout, both teams made their way to Devon's family to present his mother with the game ball. Wearing Devon's number on their uniforms for the rest of the season, the basketball team finished the year winning seven of its last nine games. <laughs> and for the first time ever, Mannheim Central won a playoff game. When you're out here and your tail's between your legs and you're hot, you think about those guys. They would love to be here in this heat and humidity with their tails dragging just like you guys are, but they aren't. By August 2011, seven months after the crash, the Barons football team started practice. Our expectations were low. We just wanted to make it through the season without having like a, a breakdown. September 2nd, 2011, the Barons opened their season at home. We dedicate tonight's game and the entire 2011 season to the memory of our four Barons who were tragically taken on January 16th. I got the privilege of seeing their parents before the game, and I was extremely emotional seeing them hurt, telling me to do it for their boys. It's an extraordinary amount of pressure on you. In the first half, Caleb struggled. Walton mishandles it, busted play. He's going to be dropped for a loss. In the second half, things would be different. Quick snap. It's going to roll. It's going to roll or run. Looking, firing, end zone, touchdown. The Barons took the lead and never gave it up. Walton's going to go for the touchdown. Caleb scored three touchdowns in a 28-12 victory. It was like a huge relief for him that they won, but it was also such sorrow that they weren't there. He just sobbed in my arms. Walton would lead the Barons to an 8-3 record and a playoff berth. Everything's just like so fresh in my mind of that day. It's just always there. It's Monday, January 16, 2012. One year to the day after Caleb Walton watched four of his friends die in a car crash. I miss you so much, man. Wish I would have never let you out of my car. I love you. Continue to be with me every day. Love you, buddy. What will it take for you to forgive yourself? I don't think I'll ever forgive myself. A lot of people say don't, don't think it's your fault, but they're not me. They haven't been in my shoes. I do take ownership. I think teenagers get lost in the fact that something like this could happen. Every choice that you make, driving that car, it has its consequences. I try to think about what my actions in the future can do to affect myself and others in a positive way.